Good evening. Welcome to Southern Indiana Current Technical Center's virtual open house. We're glad you could join us tonight. My name is Kevin Williams. I'm the assistant director here at SICTC. Tonight we're showcasing construction and transportation career clusters. We hope that you find something you like uh, while you view these videos. If you have questions, feel free to uh, put those questions or comments in the line below. We'll try to get to those just as soon as possible. Uh, again, thanks for being here and we look forward to showing off what we have to offer your student at our school. Thanks and have a good evening. Hi, welcome to Building Trades. My name is Mr. Martin and this is Mr. McClary. We are a two-year program for high school juniors and seniors, uh, and what we do is residential construction in this class. So if you come into this class as a junior, you will build one house, and your senior year, you will build a second house. So by the time you leave here, you have two houses under your belt. So just as a uh, just as a start, you know, we, we do lab work as well as out in the field. So believe it or not, we'll go out here in our lab in just a minute. And, we started this year by laying a block foundation in the lab, then we laid up brick, and then we tore all that down. And now you can see uh, what will be remnants of part of a home that we're actually building in the field. We got some experience building it here in the lab as well. Let's go look at some wall framing and roof framing. So guys, here you can see an example of where we've we've framed up some walls and we've actually uh, had students cut rafters, put decking on, and then eventually we'll demonstrate, if you can get a shot up there of the, of the empty roof deck, we'll actually demonstrate uh, black paper, roofing, shingles, ventilation, everything it would take to build a house. And we try to stay just a little bit ahead in the lab so that students can see what we're going to do before we get to the field. Just a little bit of book work, not much here, guys. We try to keep you busy out in the lab and then out in the field on the job site. You wanna talk a little bit about the yeah, job we, site? We try to basically rotate in groups. We'll split the, the class up into two groups. Uh, one group stays in the classroom and covers some material in the, the book work and the lab setting for a week. And I'll take one group to the job site uh, at the end of the week, we'll rotate groups so the next group will come in, do a little book work, come out to the lab. And the whole goal of that is try to make all the mistakes in here in the lab setting so <laughs> when we get to the job site, everything's put together right. So minimize mistakes because out there, mistakes cost money and materials. And that's why you hear the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. I think Norm Abram said that, didn't he? I believe so. Uh, he at least wrote a book on it. So the guy from this old house. but. Uh, you might just take a shot right here. You can see we have an example of a hip roof here, the framing structure of a hip roof. So that's uh, that's a very common roof style here in our area. You see our stack of drywall. We'll get to some of that here in the next uh, few weeks. You can see not only a skid steer back here, but a mini excavator, uh, things that uh, Mr. Martin does most of that work, but we do get a few kids in there to get a chance to take a spin on both a skid steer and a mini excavator, uh, which is something we'll use on the job site. And it, uh, why, don't we, why don't we travel over here into the lab? So this is our mill shop. We pretty much take care of all of our rough carpentry exercises. That all takes place in the big lab over here. The mill shop, we'll do more smaller project type stuff or uh, woodworking, cabinet making, those kinds of things over here. Yeah, so... Uh, just the other day, we had students cutting blocks into about 18-inch blocks, and we had turned the saw at a 45-degree miter, and we were running uh, crown blocks for a uh, residential uh, project where we were going to put up some crowns. So uh, we have a radial arm saw over here. We have drill presses. We have lathes, which we don't get into a whole lot. Um, we have a funeral cutter back here, which you would typically see at a, a Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, where they say they'll cut plywood for you. We have one right here in our shop and we use that a number of times. So a lot of great tools in here uh, that can help us for some inside projects as well. So what we're looking at here as far as uh, job-wise and, and the industry outlook, we have students that go in through 
carpentry, brick masonry, uh, operators, equipment, heavy equipment operators, the laborers hall, we have roofers, cement finishers, pretty much cover every trade on the, the building trade side of the industry. Um, and right now is a great time to get in because we have all these baby boomers retiring right now. And there's not enough people coming in to replace them in the workforce. And the, and the pay, the pay is, it's more, it's more than what you're going to get out of it going to college right now. We have people that are been to school, been to college, that I've talked to a lot of guys out there, got their degree in something, and now they're in the construction industry, not even using what their degree was. was they got their degree in in college. Um, this is a two-year program. You get a two-year head start on everyone else in your class. If you know that this is what you want to do for a living, for a career, um, there's a lot of money to be made out of it. Yep. And I would say as well, we're, we're actually placing some students right now in uh, second semester internships for our seniors. If you've been with us for a year and a half, then the second semester of your senior year, you can get some field experience and actually get paid uh, in collaboration with our program. And Mr. Martin, you might want to talk just a little bit about our some of our dual credits. That dual credit. offers. We have uh, basically nine dual credits from Vincennes University for uh, their construction management program. So if you come in here and you're two years in our program, you'll receive those nine dual credits of Vincennes University. So if you choose to go on to college, which is the greatest thing about career and technical education, we prepare kids for both ways, straight into the workforce, and into college, it's a win-win for the students. Um, and in their program, I think theirs is a two-year program up there. So if you take nine dual credits, you're you're three credits shy of taking out a full load for a semester. I think the full semester uh, would be the full-time semester would be considered twelve credit hours, and you get nine with us. With those nine credits, it doesn't cost a thing. All you have to do is sit down and take the 15, 20 minutes that it takes to fill out the paperwork and apply. And uh, it's just, just another perk of taking this class. And not just our class, but all the, the career tech classes out here. So students, I, I'd like to just give you a bit of uh, information about Mr. Martin and myself. Mr. Martin has been uh, running this program now for 24 years. So I came in uh, new to the program this year having about 14 years of field experience in residential construction, and then spent some time in education before coming here. But Mr. Martin has uh, has built this program or continued this program from the ground up. And as I've gotten to know uh, Mr. Martin and what he's done here, it's just a really exciting opportunity for students. So uh, we hope you apply uh, with us and We'd love to have you be a part of the Building Trades program. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Mr. Tim Knabel. I teach the Electrical Technology Program here at the Southern Indiana Career Technical Center. Um, it's a two-year program. The first year we cover a lot of basics as far as electricity goes with uh, right down to the electron. Uh, we move into different uh, forms of theory. We talk about Ohm's law. We go into all the equations. Uh, so it is helpful to have a decent uh, background with mathematics to have a, some pretty decent grades there. Um, as we move along through the first year, we work through a program called Interim Credentials. And you can find a link to that uh, to a commercial that we filmed on that program uh, on our website and it it explains what all it entails but what it does is whenever you take that in here and you graduate it'll help get you right into the second year of the electrical apprenticeship program with the IBW so that's a very nice thing to have and even if not that it's a great resume builder as you know so um, as we move through the first year we work on wiring labs out here in the shop as I'll show you here in a minute then we get into conduit and different things. And then at the end of this little tour here, I'll show you the motor control lab, which is what you do in your second year. So we'll move on into the wiring lab now. Put on my mask here. So out here what we have, these are stations built for each student to have their own wiring lab to work in. And every day they come in here 
and they work through different different labs in their work, workbook here. And they decide um, what needs to go where, and whenever it's all finished, I come around and I check off a check sheet for them. Everybody works at their own pace, so it's a pretty well self-guided program, and I'm here to assist in whatever they whatever questions they may have. Let's move along here. So we have 24 stations, like I said, one for each. This is Mr. Elpers here. He's in my morning class. Uh, what are you working on here? So right now I've just finished up with one of my residential trainer labs. It's a two four-way switching systems. So four-way switch here, three-way switch here. Each switch that you turn changes the state of the light. And then over here I've got a GFCI receptacle that if the current changes at any point, will switch it off and it uh, basically gives a more safety in a wet environment. Mm -hmm. And then up here, I just got a simple duplex receptacle on a 120 volt circuit. There we go. Yeah, regular 120 volt circuit. For the duplex receptacle, that just plug all your appliances into and uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, because as we go along, we learn how to use different kinds of meters and how to, how to use the different readings on those meters. Um, a lot of that blends in with the book work. We do a lot of book work as well as lab work in here. Uh, the electrical trade requires both, a good balance of both, so we, we do balance that out. Uh, so what's been your favorite part of the class so far? Pretty much everything. It's really hard to say what everything is because it's all so good, but, that, but it also makes it so easy because Mr. Knable has experience in the trades and it really helps him, you know, it helps us to be able to learn that when he can just jump right in and offer his assistance because he knows all that. Cool. And, oh. yeah. Awesome, well, thank you very much. All right, well, we've got here another student working on his lab. This is Mr. Zeller here. What are you working on? I just got done doing my Romex lab. Oh, okay. So it's a two-way switch, or three-way switch, my bad. Yeah. That goes, up to the light so either light can turn it on and off gotcha so yeah we've got a three-way switch receptor or a three-way switch circuit here on a can light so everybody gets a chance to practice their skills with uh not only wiring within a trainer but they also get to practice romex running box mounting can light mounting um and then the, the reason this is important for us is second semester of our first year we're going to go out and help with a habitat for humanity build and do all the wiring for it so we get a little bit of practice in here before we head out there. We're, we have yet to be out there yet this year, but we will be hopefully within a month or so. So uh, what's your been, been your favorite part of class so far? Um, it's hard to say, but my favorite part is probably the fact you can work at your own pace. Like you don't have to, you need to get there, but it doesn't matter how quick you go. And you can, um, and you can always ask Mr. Kernable for help. He's done it all, so he can help with whatever. Yeah, I, I always tell him speed comes later, so. Absolutely. Cool. Well, we're going to move into the, next, the last room here. So currently this is our wiring lab. Uh, oh, right over here is our current motor control center. We're using this right now as needed as we go. Um, but we're actually upgrading this whole setup to what we have here in the next room. So we're going with the same idea to give every student their own station so they can work at their own pace as well on this. But this is a motor control lab, and motor controls, if you don't know, it deals with how to start, stop, um, basically how to control a motor. And that goes all the way through the industrial sector of the workplace, uh, conveyor belts, mixed tanks, pumps, water pumps, and we have a lot of different uh, scenarios that can be wired up in all these labs. So we've got uh, four reverse motor starters, we've got overloads, uh, handoff auto operations, timers, and as we move along, not only will we learn the basics of motor controls, but we'll also take that into PLCs, which is a programmable logic controller. It's the computer version of motor controls. So instead of having wiring going here and here and here and here, we bring it all to a PLC, we get on a computer and we tell it what we want it to do. Set this timer for that. If this button gets pushed, I'd like it to do that, that kind of thing. So it's learning some uh, basic automation to help students get into the workplace. Um, I, with these classes, we help prepare students to go into apprenticeships 
Also, they can go right into college or they can even go right into a job after this. I've got some students that started working with residential electricians uh, in their internships, the second part of their second year, second semester, and they're still with them. So they just kind of move right along. I've got others that have worked in their internships and then they join an apprenticeship after that. So there's many different options. And uh, just like all the other classes here, we do offer the chance to go out on an internship that second semester of senior year. So um, like I said, I've got a lot of students that go work for companies like Zeller Electric, uh, Premier Electric, uh, many, many different kinds, even working in factories. So um, whether it's like a pre-maintenance type of job that can get into those. So there's just, there's many options there with the electrical sector. Um, as far as dual credits go, we offer two different classes of dual credits at Ivy Tech. For your first year, you're gonna get basic electricity. Second year in here, you're gonna get a motor control uh, dual credit. So you have those two classes, so he uh, adds up to six total credit hours, three for each. Um, and then as far as certification goes, we do offer the interim credentials program I mentioned earlier for the IBW's apprenticeship. And then also I'm looking to offer a newer uh, NCCER certification for next year for the first year class. And that pretty much, that's a nationwide recognized certification and we start off in basic construction information and we move right on through uh, the electrical level one certification. So we learn everything from how to hammer a nail to how to hook up light switches. So um, it's a very, very good program for that. So that pretty much concludes the electrical technology class here at SICTC. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Seth Hall, and I'm the uh, instructor in the uh, HVAC program here at Southern Indiana Group Tech Center. Um, the field of HVAC is uh, really about heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and ventilation, and it is really a pretty broad field. Um, most of the programs down this hall all have something related with HVAC. So usually what I tell people, if you are somewhat undecided, maybe I don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to work with my hands. Um, this is a good place to start because we kind of cover a little everything. If you're going to be an HVAC technician, you're going to have to be a carpenter. Uh, you're going to have to be an electrician. You're going to have to be a fabricator. You're going to have to work, be able to work with sheet metal. Uh, you're going to have to have a lot of troubleshooting skills and most of the time too, you're going to have to be your own plumber. So we're going to cover basically everything you see down our hall all in one course and try to cram it all together. And for a, a technician to succeed uh, in this trade, you really have to be pretty good at all of those things. Uh, but the nice thing about HVAC is it's also broken down into several different different disciplines. So if you decided that, you know, I really like the electrical portion of this, but I didn't care for the fabrication, that's okay. You could still stay in HVAC and make a whole career just working on the electrical part. Maybe you like the duct fabrication, and working with sheet metal and welding, uh, which is something else we do in here. Uh, that's also a whole career all by itself. So you can make uh, your next, uh, after high school, your next steps all based on working with sheet metal. Um, plumbing, same thing. Uh, if you decide, well, you know, I like working with piping. Uh, I like working with the equipment used to install piping and you can make a whole career just doing that. So that's something I think is unique about this class and this trade compared to other things. Um, if you're gonna be an HVAC, uh, one of the things that I think is a positive about uh, the craft too is you're never in the same place every day. You're always somewhere different. You are usually outside. Uh, so if you're a person who likes to spend a lot of time outdoors, this is probably a, a good job for you. Um, it doesn't require a huge amount of training after, uh, after high school. A person could get right out of this program and technically go straight to work in the field with any extra education. Uh, but there is opportunities available in the form of apprenticeships and um, you can get a, uh, Ivy Tech has a great program, which we do dual credits through. And um, that would be a, a, a next step after high school that you could take. Um, so, but it's not necessarily, you know, if you don't feel like you're college bound, 
you can be very successful in this career if you wanted to be, if you wanted to do it. And it wouldn't take you a whole lot of time. Uh, I would expect anybody who left this class and went straight to the trade, by the time they're 24, 25 years old, you would be topping out as a journeyman, and depending on which discipline you chose to, to, to be an expert in, uh, pay ranges anywhere between 30 and $40 an hour. So um, there's a very good likelihood if you put in a lot of effort and create a good name for yourself that you will be able to get to that level in just a short amount of a few years after high school. So um, I this class, I don't, um, one thing else, else I tell my students, um, getting out of high school, going into trade, there's not a lot of investment that you need to make to do this. Uh, a lot of trades and a lot of disciplines, you have to go into it and spend a lot of money on tools and equipment. Uh, in this trade, uh, you can expect your contractor to buy most of this stuff for you. You know, most employees are only required to have minimal amounts of hand tools. So that's kind of a plus. Um, and you know, as far as, you know, your apprenticeships, if any training is required most of the time, your employers are gonna pay for that up front. So um, that's kind of a plus too. Even if you do need re uh, extra training or maybe uh, schooling through that apprenticeship program, you're not gonna be out anything. Uh, in fact, my apprenticeship, I went through a five-year apprenticeship. Um, when I was on site in the classroom or in a lab, and it was in a similar structure building like this, uh, I was actually paid to be there. So that's a big plus. I don't think too many people can say they got actually paid to go to school. So that was that's a big plus of a lot of these programs. So it's something to really think about. Um, I uh, a little bit about myself though. I mentioned I, I went through a five-year apprenticeship. I spent uh, 18 years in the trade. Uh, I worked for a couple of different shops in town doing HVAC installation. Um, I also uh, did a little sheet metal fabrication and in the later part of my career, I was a service technician. So um, I moved through different phases of the craft and spent plenty of time doing each discipline. So I kind of, you know, I'm a good resource what can you expect if I wanted to do just this portion. So you can kind of say I've experienced quite a bit of it and I'm able to relate to the students and tell them, well, you know, this is something you like to do. Maybe you should look at this part of it. You know, so that's one plus of having somebody like me around uh, who's actually been through it and actually done it. And uh, as far as education and teaching, this is just year number four for me. So um, my classroom, I run it probably a lot differently than you would see in a lot of uh, probably what you're used to. I don't do a lot of homework um, in my craft. Uh, once you were off the job or you've made your repair or you've made your installation, you, uh, you don't take your work home with you. That's another plus of HVAC. It's, um, most of the time, if there's anything, it's mental. I mean, you're just, you're thinking about the next day because you're really, for the most part, I was pretty excited to be there at work. It was an exciting feel. It's something always different. So I don't do that in the classroom much. We don't, I don't like to send home, uh, work home with you. So everything we do in here is trying to be done within the hours of this class. And um, we try to get out of this classroom as fast as possible, obviously. Um, I think lecturing is important, but the biggest part of our learning is going to take place out here in our lab. And so I thought I would take you in there for a little bit and kind of show you some of the things we're working on. Um, if you want to walk this way, we'll just walk in. HVAC, usually the first thing people think of is, oh, the heating and air conditioning in my home. So one of the, uh, the first things we do is we start uh, dissecting, putting these, uh, installing these uh, furnaces and air handlers and matching up the components, teaching the kids, you will learn how to decipher the model numbers and serial numbers, and you're gonna figure out where what this wiring does and where everything goes. Uh, we also do just labs on, you know, pulling the equipment out and then reinstalling it. Uh, we got a lot of, uh, got a lot, there's a lot of things that you can uh, do uh, with these as far as a technician and, find out a lot of things that uh, will save you a lot of money, even if you decide, well, I don't really care for working on this kind of equipment, but some of the repairs might save you a lot of money when you get out of high school. So you can always think back uh, and use this as a valuable resource, even if you don't like, go into HVAC, maybe you're just curious about how, how some of these things work in my home. Um, we also work on small appliances like refrigerators and, uh, oh, we've had everything in here from, uh, coolers, freezers, uh, just 
just different washing machines, dryers. You wouldn't think, well, that's not HVAC. That's not what I think of when it comes to mind. But HVAC is really all about controlling electric motors. So anything that has an electric motor in it that you might find in your home that produces heat or maybe performs a specific, specific task, uh, it's important that I think my students get to work on that equipment and see a wide variety of things so they have a lot more skills uh, coming out of school. Um, no, really, we've got just about everything most sheet metal shops would have. And sheet metal uh, is the primary uh, material that we use to make, you know, duct work and uh, different fixtures for different tasks. Uh, we do a little bit of fabricating. Uh, back here, we got a, well, just, I just got one welder and we usually I rotate the kids in and out of that so we can learn how to do a little bit of welding too. This, this thing here will cut sheets of metal, really heavy material. We slide it in and it operates. Uh, the kids all learn how to use this, usually within the first two or three days. So this isn't something like year two you're getting into. I try to get your hands on this equipment as fast as possible. Once you learn the safety steps, you see how this work. You're always wondering, well, how would I cut a large piece of metal? Uh, it's so hard that you can't even bend it here with your hand. Well, with equipment like this, you know, I'll show you how to use it and how that's done. Um, I've also got, we do some automation back here automated cutting and this this piece of equipment here is uh, a really fun uh, piece of equipment to learn how to use and the shop I, I actually worked at had the exact same model so I'm pretty familiar with it and my students get familiar with it and they learn how to use it we cut different shapes out like my uh, my favorite college over here we made us made me a little sign the other day so we can do all kinds of fun stuff with it but the kids all learn how to do it and that's a whole career in itself I actually had a student uh, last year get out of high school and one of his employers asked by the way do you know how to run one of these machines and he was able to say well actually yes i did i worked on it for two years mr all so he got this great job now um, making 20 bucks an hour out of high school and just operating machinery like this so this is very common in the world of hvac if you're going to work in a fab shop um, and so that's just one of the many things we do it's very very diverse like i said um over here in this over back here, we also have, this is what I call our installation and troubleshooting lab. And most of this equipment, like you saw the table, uh, is dead. It's just sitting there. This allows the students to actually be able to install it and make the equipment run. And we uh, repeatedly take this stuff in and out all the time. Uh, and this is also the part my afternoon students are working on more of the service aspect of it, the troubleshooting. Uh, I go through and I, we disable some of these in the morning so they have to come in in the afternoon and figure out well, what's wrong, what's the problem here. So I think that's a, a lot of fun. And once again, not a lot of time spent in the classroom doing stuff like this. You know, we jump straight out into the lab and we start working on uh, appliances like this. So um, like it's a very, very hands-on course. Um, over here, when my students are working on a welding project, we're fabricating some pipe. And this is a very real, real world uh, experience here. Wherever you go, stuff like this keeps your buildings working and running. And uh, this is just some of the basic skills they learn to, to help do those things, uh, keep those things going. But the structure of class uh, year one, when you came here, a lot of the skills you will be focusing on is sheet metal fabrication. Uh, we'd start talking with that. We move into airflow and, and basic electrical troubleshooting um, and in the last part of your uh, first year last semester we focus primarily on refrigeration and we all get a certification by moving through that last semester or second year uh, with that certification that's a really important one uh, working with refrigeration you can uh, pretty much get employment right away as long as you earn that certification so that thing's pretty valuable uh, and I do that my first year. And the reason I do that my first year is because I have a lot of people who come into that first year as a senior and say, hey, I can't come back next year to take a second year of a course. Well, what's the best tool you can give me to put on a resume? I feel like that certification is very important working with refrigeration. It's the EPA 608. Uh, those of you may have heard about it. So I get my first year students that by the end of the year. Uh, second year we come in, we, we cover still a lot of more safety that we did. And we continue on the safety that we covered on the first year, we get our OSHA 10, uh, which is also another great resume builder. And then the second semester of senior year, 
after we've done all the troubleshooting and the electrical portion of this class, uh, a lot of my kids choose to go out on internships in their second semester. So second year students that are, you know, uh, on a path to graduate can go work in the field instead of coming to this class for two and a half hours, just like a lot of the other programs we have in here. And most of my students take advantage of that. We've got uh, quite a few partners in the industry that are, are more than willing to hire uh, a good student with a, with a good reputation and uh, some certifications to put on his resume. And uh, once again, I talked about earlier about getting paid to go to school. It's just another opportunity to do that. And I'd have to say most of your high school uh, companions probably won't be able to say that. So that's something unique that we do around here. We usually have, a, like I said, pretty high participation in that. Uh, most of my students don't have any problem getting into industry for internships. So that's just one major plus about the program. My name is Seth Hall, and I thank you for taking this tour with me today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me and don't forget to apply uh, on our website uh, to get become part of our program. Welcome to SICTC Automotive Collision Repair. Here at the Tech Center, we do all kinds of different opportunities on collision repair. We start with the very beginning as a student comes in, so you do not need prior experience. We go start with the tools, safety, and then we jump right into the bodywork. Here at the Tech Center in Collision Repair, we offer dual credits. We partner with Vincennes University. We do painting refinishing, non-structural lecture, non-structural lab, non-structural painting and non-structural lab and we offer ASC certifications and all these are no cost to the student or the parent so you get college credits at no cost that can transfer to Vincent University. The ASC certificates carry on for a year if you go into college or you go into the workplace. We have ASC for non-structural repair, structural repair, painting and refinishing and mechanical and electrical. So we jump right in hands-on. We do about 60% hands-on and 40% in the classroom. We do small projects. We try to start on smaller projects, but as you can see, we have the Warwick County Sheriff Department, Humvee, that we actually did a flat bike paint job to it, and we did the wiring for the lights. So we do get into a little bit of electrical. So that's one of our bigger jobs. We also do smaller bumpers. This is a bumper for our company, actually, it is a steel bumper, which we cover from steel to SMC to plastic repair. Uh, we do not do much glass repair in here, but we do a lot of sanding and putty on fenders and fixing small dents. We do overalls. We have a nice little Toyota that we are starting to do into the paint room. We're going to move into the paint room with it. We actually have the hood in the paint room that we're getting ready to paint. All students do the work. I do not do the painting. I just advise the painting. We have a downdraft paint booth, and it is a bake-on. It will bake at 138 degrees once we get everything done on it, so we have a very nice facility with it. We do have our own paint mixing, where we can mix some paint. And students will get hands-on. We do not mix large amounts, but they get to learn to use the scale and the proper parts per grams on a mixture. Before we move to the paint boots, we do a lot of small dent repair on fenders. We do anything that is dent repairable unless we have to replace it. We have our primer boost. We have two nice primer boosts. As you can see, we have some fenders that all students have started to work on. They learn how to do the whole process of making a dent repair, putting the primer on, block sanding and prepping it, getting it ready for paint. And then we do smaller projects besides cars. This is aluminum, which is a good project for students. It'll be a total paint job when we're done with it. You can see where they're doing some buddy work and getting it all blocked up, ready to go. We allow students to bring in their own projects. This is a student project 
and he's stripping the paint off of it to restore this with his dad. The only thing with student projects we do allow, but we need to understand that whoever the students or the parents are responsible for their own supplies and materials because paint materials are pretty expensive down to even the sandpaper. So you are allowed to bring in your own projects as long as you understand that you are responsible for the cost of it. Okay. Well, as we try and keep all the work that we do in here to industry standard, our advisory board that shop owners advise us what they look to hire students out of our program into, and they want it to be industry standard what they do in their own shop. We do use the frame rack and um, do small pulls. We do some SMC repairs, so they get their hands and they get a broad spectrum in here. SMC, like on this Corvette, we um, have some spots we had to putty up, fix, and then we put primer on it. We'll get ready to blend some paint on that. So we do, students do get the chance of blending and painting and doing the clear coat. We also do some fiberglass. We get into some fiberglass repair. Not a large amount, but we always end up with some Fox body hoods or something that's true fiberglass. So they do get a chance to do some fiberglass work. And then all students get a chance to disassemble. We disassemble cars so they understand where the parts come from, nuts and bolt sizes, and all the aspects of technology of the car. So you get a broad range in the collision repair. That's collision repair. Hope that you get online and um, sign up for the collision repair if you have a love for cars, and we will see you then. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Brian Rubel. I'm David Orfield. And we're the instructors in the Automotive Service Program here at the Southern Indiana Career Technical Center. I want to show you a little bit about our program, show you around a little bit. Uh, this program is a two-year program set up for juniors and seniors. Uh, we have some certi certifications that students can get while they're here. We do the eight ASC certifications that are common out in the industry. And we also do a couple others, uh, maintenance and light repair and auto service technology. So there's actually 10 certifications students can get while they're here. The, uh, um, we also have 12 dual credits. Um, we have our dual credits through Ivy Tech. Um, right now, um, we're in Mr. Rule's room. Uh, we kind of have it split up between two classes. Um, you'll be in Mr. Rule's class half the year. You'll be in my class half the year. Um, I teach steering and suspensions, uh, alignments, and engines the first year. Mr. Rule teaches brakes, AC, and uh, basic electrical, electrical. Basic electrical the first year. Um, halfway through the year, we're just past halfway. We're going to switch, and you're going to be learning the same thing that the other class just learned. Um, right now, in the morning class, we have about one shot day a week once we get going. Um, right now, we're in Mr. Rubel's room. Uh, my room is next door. Um, from here, we're going to go out to the shop and just kind of show you around a few things out there, um, kind of how we broke, how we broke up in the different areas. Yes. One thing you'll notice when you step out here, the lab is very large. We've got the largest shop area in the building. It is an automotive shop that most, uh, many dealerships in the area would be envious of. So we have 10 two-post lifts and four counter alignment machines, along with a number of empty bays. So we have plenty of space. You use just about all every inch of this shop for your time here. We do have a tool room as well as an engine teardown and transmission teardown room is separate in back. And we'll take a look at that here shortly as well. Um, everything in here is up to date. Um, we try and get new equipment all the time. Last year we just got two new Hunter Hawkeye machines. Um, so that's kind of top of the line out in the industry right now. We use um, snap on hand tools. Um, they spent quite a bit. Uh, if you look around, all the gray toolboxes have, are full of hand tools for all the students to use on um, both during class and on open shop days. We get students that come in that have quite a bit of prior knowledge, and then we also have students come in that don't know anything about a car. So it's kind of across the board. 
We start off pretty basic with things, a lot of things in the classroom explaining the systems of the car. One of the first things we'll do is bring students out a simple thing like an oil change on a vehicle, how to set the vehicle on the lift properly without damaging it, uh, changing the oil, checking the fluids, things like that, and some tire service. Uh, when Mr. Overfield moves out of that section in his class, he'll go to steering in alignment in suspension systems. We'll tell you a little bit about that. I'm already past right now. We're just uh, getting into the alignments. We just had our suspension test today. Um, we're getting ready to start alignments. Here we have our new Hunter Hawkeye. Um, again, this is pretty much top of the line out right now. Um, so we have multiple vehicles um, in the in the shop, uh, Toyota supplies us with quite a few vehicles um, every few years. Um, so here is our live machine set up. My afternoon class is getting ready to do some alignments this afternoon as well. Um, we have four alignment machines right now. So all students will come in, they'll mount, take tires off the vehicles, put them on here, we'll dismount them off the rim, mount them on the rim, and put them on here and balance them. If we need to do simple tire repairs like a patch or plug, we've got a station that we can do that in so that all students learn how to do basic tire repairs. From that, from that beginning, we'll move into a uh, brake system. So brakes are something that commonly wear out and need maintenance on a vehicle. So we will go through all the different components on a typical brake system. Um, you see over here on this Highlander, we've got the front wheel off, you see the front disc brake assembly. We'll talk in thorough, pretty thoroughly about disc brakes, drum brakes, analog brakes, the hydraulics of the systems, the boosters that are used, service repair, adjustments, things like that. Uh, another thing that we do, this is a second year class, is we do a, what we call a class called drive lines, which will include manual and automatic transmission, clutches, uh, Rear axle assemblies, drive shafts, CV axles. Um, so, actually, my afternoon class is beginning this today on clutches and manual transmissions. Over here on this, um, my afternoon class, we're starting this here shortly. Um, we'll be doing engine performance. So, we have different types of scan tools. Um, you stay up to date on our scan tools as well. Um, on this, we also have several lab scopes. We have a, a waveform set up for a fuel injector. So you will learn some basic operation of lab scopes, um, what the different sensors actually look like, the waveform patterns that they have. Um, this is gonna be second year students. Um, they'll need to have introductory to electrical that they'll do first year with Mr. Rubel. And then we'll do advanced electrical as well as getting into engine performance. So everything on a vehicle now is electronically operated. So you have to be very, very advanced in electrical work to work on today's vehicles, both AC and DC as we get into hybrid vehicles and full electric vehicles. It's a big shop and we do have things in different areas. So we don't necessarily just stay in one area all the time. Um, over here, Mr. Rubel has some AC work set up that he'll be doing first year as well. Yes, this is the air conditioning station. Shows a lot of the uh, common uh, parts you'll see on AC systems that are out in the industry right now. So we'll talk about the purpose and how those things work together. How do you service it legally and environmentally friendly ways. Uh, we've got very nice AC recovery machines that are used out in the industry. So you'll get, you have an opportunity to become uh, certified in AC while you're here if you choose to. One of the first things you'll take here is basic electricity for automobiles. So ranging from just a simple battery, starting system, alternator, charging system. Uh, we've got test equipment to show how those systems work and to diagnose them, battery chargers, jump packs, diagnosing through those systems. We also do lighting, airbag systems, basic computer systems. The list, almost every system on a car has some type of form of electricity in it, so you really have to understand that. We, we do work closely with Toyota. Um, as far as the electrical, Toyota is just donating a new hybrid Highlander to our program. And we do have one Prius right now. Um, we also have a Prius that has all of the electronics stripped down, battery, 
um, the uh, three phase motor. Um, this is our engine teardown room. Um, my juniors is going to, or uh, my morning class is going to be starting engine teardown here um, in the next coming weeks. So, this is where we'll tear the engines down. Um, once we get the engines torn down and reassembled, we'll take them out here for Mr. Rubel's class to do the transmission teardown. So this is a nice room that we can do tear down and set, set our parts aside. We got all our tools and special equipment that we need in here, measuring tools and such, so we don't have to interact with that things going on out in the shop. We've got a cabinet here loaded with thousands of dollars of precision measuring equipment. So we're very blessed in the Every resources have, that we have. Uh, there'll be two students per engine. Um, each um, engine will have their own set of micrometers as well as dial board gauges. Um, we'll measure everything as we disassemble it. Um, we'll measure clearances. Uh, we'll measure it how we'll show you different ways to measure it. We'll be measuring micrometers, dial board gauges, and then we'll also show you how you use plastic gauge in case you don't have um, these thousands of dollars in tools at your house. As an automotive technician, you got to be able to have many types of skills. You got to have electrical skills, computer skills, obviously mechanical skills, um, machinist skills. So we have lathes here for machining brakes off the vehicle. We also have on car brake lathes. We have drill presses. We have all kinds of things where you're going to be involved in machining, also in fabrication. So it really, the field is really uh, wide open. There's opens a lot of doors for potential jobs in the future. Even if you don't decide you don't want to turn a wrench the rest of your life, it gives you a lot of different pathways you can move in. We would encourage you, if you're interested, to apply SICTC.com Automotive Service Program. Welcome to uh, Diesel Service Technology. My name is Josh Schultz. I'm the instructor here at SickTick. Um, part of the diesel service class is diesel engine systems and diesel engine system labs, diesel engine electrical and diesel electrical lab, and transport transportation fundamentals. Uh, those are all dual credits from Vincennes University, and it's part of the program we hear. We split it up into two years, a junior year and a senior year and we go through each of those classes uh, throughout the two year term. I'll take you around to show you a couple things in the lab space. This is our cutaway Caterpillar engine. Uh, we do a, quite a few uh, tests with this. It shows the students what exactly is in an engine, what functions they do, and kind of gives a cutaway example of what they're looking at without them getting into the into the engine and um, some of our tests will label each item and the kids will come out here and they will mark down what they think that item is and that is one of our tests here at the diesel class another part of the first year uh, diesel service technology is taking apart a cummins isx engine uh, the juniors this year i've got them working on that kind of in the middle of it right now but you'll pull the engine all the way apart down to the block and you use these tables to put all the parts and you'll label them accordingly and you guys will get hands-on experience working on the engine this is the tool room for all the supplies that students will have available to them on the far rack we have a multitude of screwdrivers wrenches clamps, hammers, uh, everything you see here. They also have jacks, jack stands, as well as impact sockets over here, regular sockets over here. Uh, in the cabinets, they have specialty tools for the Cummins engines, as well as cooling systems on trucks. Uh, this tool crib is really stacked to the, to the top with all the tools that you guys will need when going into your future careers. These toolboxes here, they come fully stocked and the students will get into groups and they'll be able to work on these uh, toolboxes each and every day while they're working on the engine. And 
another part of the student's class is taking care of their own equipment and that's a that's one reason why we give the students their own toolboxes uh, in their group of three or four another part of the first year uh, class we go over a lot of steering and suspension stuff kids can get a hands-on experience with that as well as some of the electronics and the starting systems of the of the trucks After the first year, the diesel students will be able to get hands-on experience on a entire truck. They'll be working on the steering and suspension. Suspension. Uh, they'll do oil changes, a full preventative maintenance procedure, change oil filters, uh, fuel filters, as well as check the air tanks, all the air lines, check all the electrical cords, tires, brakes. They'll go through the entire truck and do a full inspection. That's part of the second year class once they get the fundamentals down after their first year. Again, you guys can see the lifts. Um, it's a very good opportunity to have lifts. It's just like when you guys get to your jobs. You use the same equipment here as you would at, at your job. Another part of the diesel class is hooking up lights working with the electrical system of a truck. Here we have a trainer. It's hooked up to the back of a semi and represents a trailer. Students will have the opportunity to wire this complete system from nothing all the way to where you see it now fully lit up. During the class, students will have the opportunity to take breaks all the way down and apart. Uh, you see here, the tires are already removed. They get hands-on experience daily, uh, or at the very least, a couple times a week, working hands-on with the vehicles. Uh, this year, we've taken fifth wheels completely off, disassembled them, put them back together, uh, lubricated them up like they're supposed to do in the, uh, in the, in the career world. <coughs> We've also removed the brake chambers um, we replaced a lot of the slack adjusters that are on this truck particularly. Um, the students got a lot of hands-on experience with this truck uh, this year. Over in this area we have three engines. Uh, they are running engines and we have the capability of hooking the diagnostic equipment up to them. Uh, troubleshooting trouble codes as well as seeing different data points on the engine when they're running. This gives the students an opportunity to understand how engines work, how the computer systems operate, and it'll give them a well-rounded foundation for when they get into the career field to be able to help the company they work for uh, achieve their goals. And what goes along with that is a couple laptops. We have Caterpillar, we have Eaton and Freightliner, as well as Cummins. Thanks for attending this video um, walk around of the diesel lab. I hope you guys found it interesting and you guys want the hands-on experience to further your knowledge of the diesel technology to get you ready for your career. Thanks.